morning my mothers my fathers my sisters and all the children of the Bena Congo welcome again to the mission of a woman on earth we have been covering basically the virtues of the sacred flame we studied basically nobility part one and we're gonna dive into nobility part two in our next session but today let's look at something very very important uh, the scam of soul healing my mothers of africa our queens our beautiful mothers of africa basically we have been speaking to you about the mission of a woman on earth we spoke to you that you are the helper of humanity that you are the essential liaison bridge that you are the guardian of the sacred flame a flame that cons that conserves basically that contains love conservation, purity, mediator, healing, and ennoblement. And we spoke to you basically of the virtues of the sacred flame, nine virtues, modesty, greatness, morality, nobility, delicacy, faithfulness, dignity, fertility, and sincerity. You know, we dived into modesty, we spoke about greatness, emphasizing on simplicity and humility. We spoke about morality, and we spoke a little bit about nobility, which we shall continue in our next session. And we also gave you a reminder of why we're teaching you these things in our last session. But before we continue basically with our nobility part two, my mothers and children of Africa, we want to touch on something very crucial that is affecting many of our mothers of Africa and of the world. My mothers, my fathers, my brothers and sisters of Africa, the Pacific and the Caribbean, receive our salutations here at Zorabantu. My mothers, we covered four virtues so far, but before we continue with our virtues, my mothers of Africa, our queens, would like to address a few things, my mothers. Now, for example, in modesty that we spoke to you last time, which is very crucial for a woman, a woman who lacks modesty, she accepts this thing that they call in church soul healing. The pastors of today are undressing women for the purpose of soul healing. In French we say, cure d'âme. I saw a video before we entered into the new year of a Ghanaian pastor who was basically washing women in front of the congregation to make them enter into a new year. Hmm? A pastor strips church members to bath them in a basin in what they call the crossover service. Hmm? You'll be able to see the picture over there, my mothers. You know, this kind of things, even though they claim that it was uh, 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 set up for a, 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 a comedy, but why would this even be a suggestion to put women like this and dressing them in front of the church for a crossover nonsense. The first one to blame and the first one who is at fault are the women. It is the woman. Because a married woman who is modest can never allow a man who is not her husband to undress her. Even if you are not a married woman, a pastor is telling you to take off your clothes so that, so, that, so that he can be able to do a soul healing. You strip like how Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden for soul healing. You mothers, you that is more powerful, you are in fact the one that will bring sense to the pastor. And restore this pastor to common sense and the right path. Because those teachings of soul healing are not the teachings of Master Yeshua. Study the teachings of Master Yeshua from A to Z that is mentioned in the eternal gospel. In the true teachings of Master Yeshua, Master Yeshua has never mentioned this idea of soul healing. Even in the manipulated text that you read of the Romans today, the Bible of the Romans, you never find a text on soul healing that pastors do today. Those are satanic practices, you pastor. Hmm? According to which universal law that you could strip a woman naked or half naked for soul healing. Who told you that to gain purity, to clean someone, to become pure, you need to strip them? Splashing the person with olive oil. Purity are thoughts. To make someone pure, it's about someone's thoughts. 
When a person produces clean thoughts, that is what creates inner purity. It is not by stripping a woman naked for soul healing that makes her pure. No. You are there busy applying her oil in her private parts and intimate parts, touching her everywhere. Those are satanic practices. Hmm? We are teaching you, our mothers, our women of Africa, please get out of those things. You pastors that do these things at this particular moment, repent radically. You have entered into evil and wicked things. You have joined certain movements that indulge you in such things. Leave that movement. If you entered into occultism, stop and do a repentance. The Son of Man is in need of you. The eternal our Creator is in need of you. Repent, pastors. Those things of soul healing. No, no, no. Those are not the teachings of Master Yeshua. Master Yeshua never taught about soul healing. You know, this is something very critical in the religious world, especially in the, Christian, in the Christianity world. All this we're trying to help our mothers in the cadre of virtues. We want our mothers to have virtues. We want them to wear virtues of light that will make a bridge of light an essential liaison bridge. So they can become the bridge of Godship in the world. Hmm. So healing. Firstly, we would like to say that all oh, the foolishness that is happening in the act of soul healing, it is condemnable. A man of God or a servant of God should never, never, I say never, can give an instruction to believers on what to do. Whether it is so healing or not, never, never. Master Yeshua, you know, the foundation and uh, all this idea of soul healing in Christian theology, it is sourced from the book of John chapter 4, where Master Yeshua was by the well and he was speaking to a Samaritan woman. His disciples had gone out to look for food in town. This Samaritan woman came to draw water and Master Yeshua asked her for water. She said, you are a Jew. We the Samaritan don't speak with Jews. And Master Yeshua said to the woman, if you knew the person you are speaking to, you are the one that would have asked him for water. She said, my Lord, give me that water so I should stop coming here to draw anymore. Master Yeshua tells her, go and call your husband. She says, I don't have a husband. The one that I live with is not my husband. Master Yeshua tells her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you have now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. He continued to speak to her until the woman left. You can continue to read about this passage in John chapter 4. Now see, the Christian theology took this passage to say Master Yeshua did a soul healing on this woman. Up to where he came to reveal the truth about this woman, that this woman had no man. Hmm. My fellow pastors, you need to stop this crap and biggest scam of soul healing. The true soul healing is it is the word of God. It is the word of God that heals the spirit of a person, that heals the soul of a person, that cures the soul of a person. It is the knowledge of the laws of creation. When a woman, you mother, when you think and gain the knowledge of the laws of creation, and you get the knowledge and understanding of the laws we shall teach you, or that which you shall, you shall learn from looking for the Son of Man. There are so many laws. When, you should be, when, you, when you're going to be aware of these laws and gain an understanding of these laws, that knowledge will heal your soul. That knowledge will show you your foolishness and wickedness so that the spirit in you awakens. That spirit in you should now meet the Son of Man. What does the spirit have to do with sex? You are calling it soul healing. But the questions you are asking, you are asking sexual questions. You will tell us, oh, but sex can destroy the soul. If sex can destroy a soul and create demons and phantoms in a person, but it is only by knowledge that a person can be freed. 
Now you a so-called man of God, if you are a so-called man of God, give a knowledge if you have. Hmm? You take a wife of another man or a woman of another man, eh, you take her into your office and you begin to speak to her about her intimate life. For what? Do you need to speak to her about her intimate life? Who are you? Show me in the Bible where Master Yeshua began to ask a woman intimate questions. Questions like, who slept with you? How many men have you slept with? Ah, Pastor, all these questions. So you can do what with it. And you, woman, my mothers, you are entering into a moral conversation with the so-called man of God with no modesty and you're calling it pastoral healing and checkup. See where you have lost your spiritual leadership and spiritual eldership. Hmm? You did a soul healing with Pastor Matungulu and Mr. Banda was the secretary of Pastor Matungulu. He left Pastor Matungulu's church and began his own church. You go to the church of Mr. Banda to do another soul healing. Brother Samuel, who was basically in Mr. Banda's church, leaves Mr. Banda's church and creates a prayer group. You follow Brother Samuel. And now you're talking about intimate things of your husband to Brother Samuel. Ah! Finally, where is your womanhood? How many churches will you go to? All these associations with no lucrative goal to speak about your intimate things. If you have a problem related to these issues, go and consult a doctor. Go and consult a specialist in sexology. Pastor, you are there to teach the knowledge of God. You are there to voice out the teachings of Master Yeshua. Like how we are doing here at Zolabantu, we are teaching the teachings of the Son of Man. Hmm? The pastor, the only pastor that can cure, the only pastor that can cure a person is the Holy Spirit through the knowledge of the laws of creation. Starting from today, pastor, stop the act of soul healing. Delete that practice. It is false theology. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Have a look at some of our products and some of our features in Zolabantu. And also a small short clip of the education syllabus project which is going on in Zolabantu. Launching very soon in March. We'll be right back soon. Kisses. Welcome to the Zola Bantu Life Partner Education. Your Twitter is Ms. Mbai Bunu. This is Lecture 2, The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts. Contents. Introduction. Why learn your partner's love language? The five love languages. Clues to identifying your spouse's love language. Empty love tank syndrome. The five love languages explained. And a final word. We can all agree that we need love. It lies at the very heart of human existence. We need it before we learn to love as babies, and we will need it as long as we live. Something inside of us cries out for love. It is that desire to be intimate and to be loved by another. Marriage is designed to meet this need for love and intimacy. And contrary to this, isolation is devastating to the human being. The honeymoon experience does not last forever. It is relatively short-lived, about two years, and after that we are forced to come back to reality. Some of your partner's personality traits become annoying and irritating, and it is at this time that we need to practice each other's primary love language. This will help to meet their need for love and enhance the love within the marriage. We must be learn, willing to learn our spouse's love language because just like our primary or home. Stop the act of soul healing. Because when you do a soul healing to help somebody to understand their sin, you are maintaining spiritual laziness. You encourage spiritual laziness. Even if you have good intentions, you are not helping the person because... The goal of a person on earth is for the person to get out of 
spiritual laziness. He or she needs to identify the source of his or her own problems alone. You cannot make a person discover the source of their problem by force. No. It is not like a doctor. You are not even doctors, pastor. You are, in, you are nurses. The only doctor is the word of God. It is the word of God that does an exact diagnosis on the person. You are not even nurses, I'm sorry, because nurses are basically the beings of nature, the symbies, the angels. Never again do so healing. Never. Stop it. But I can speak with, uh, with people who come to me. You say, I can speak with people who come to me. Make exchanges. Have a conversation. And in, in the exchanges that you have, do not give your point of view. No. Give the knowledge of the word only. Leave the person, him or herself, to make their own choice. They should do their own experience because he or her should do their own experience. When they do their own experience, that is what will make him or her concrete. You experience, pastor, of your success in your marriage. It is you. It has nothing to do with the experience of another. You are not married to the same person. Neither is the marriage the same. You have, you have different karmas. You don't have the same experiences. What he or she has come to do in the world is not the same as you. So in consequence, stop this, stop, stop this soul healing. Who even go far, who not even advise you on soul healing. Instead, delete it, remove it, remove that ministry in the church. And if there's a church that only focuses on soul healing, close that church. Because the medicine is the word of God. It is the knowledge of the laws of creation. In this domain of even teaching the, the laws of creation, you are in error. You don't know about the true word of God. Now you have gone far up to undressing women, church. Mama, mama, you remove your clothes in front of another man. Where is your womanhood? So now your husband, where have you placed him? Where have you placed your husband? You, a woman, you remove your clothes in front of another man who is a, self, a self-proclaimed pastor and a man of God. Even if he was consecrated, would that permit him to take a woman of another man and say, take off your clothes so I can chase away the demons in you? See where you are fallen. Any crazy fella out there is playing with you, mama. For some pastors who are doing soul healing, we know you are conducting soul healing. Questions like, hey, mama, see how you have walked? Don't walk like this. Be like this. Be like that. Mama, do this. Manage your marriage. Hey, mama, try to do this and fix this. Stop it. Even this is not good because in this you maintain spiritual laziness. Teach the laws of creation if you know it. If you don't know, listen to Zola Bantu. Take our videos. When you gather in your church, play one video. People begin to listen. Do that. Unless you know the laws of creation. And mothers, there is a great need of modesty. If your husband has a problem somewhere, but they are specialists in the medical field, put that in prayer. The pastor has no anointing for healing. That. You don't even know the life of the pastor. You don't know. To be a pastor doesn't mean you become a sexologist. To be a pastor doesn't mean you become a sexologist. Hmm? Oh, the word of God has everything. But the word of God is what? It is the laws of creation. Do you know the laws of creation, Pastor? Pastor, you can continue to do your gymnastics in the Bible, but do you know the laws of creation? We have to repent of what, Pastor? Repent. He's alive. He's coming soon. We will repent of what? Hmm? Woman, stop insulting your husband. Oh, but here you're teaching morality. These are rules of morality. These are rules of morality, basically are consequences of low levels of spirituality. That is no spirituality. Spirituality is the knowledge of creation and the laws that govern that creation. Pastors, do you know it? So we advise you, our pastors, download the videos that's all about you. On Sunday, play the videos for the congregation to listen. You also sit there and listen. Those that will basically be awakened, they will enter into the eternal gospel. Do it! Because you have, not, you, have, you have taken our mothers who have come to look for God. And since many of these women and our mothers have fallen, no, no knowledge in their head, they say yes and yes to everything, up to when they have removed your clothes. Hmm? Papa Yukumani tells an amazing story. He says that uh, it has been seven years since he received a woman that died of AIDS. Hmm? The woman came to see him. 
She says, ah, Pastor Daniel, I've looked for you by all means. What happened, Mama? Ah, Papa, you used to say there's no liberty without responsibility. See where I went to meet a pastor so he can set me free. When I arrived there, the pastor says to deliver me, he needs to touch me in my intimate parts. Father, they played with me. But I had no choice. And with my pain, I thought these pastors had power to heal me. I took my heart and money and gave to the pastor. She says, if I mention the name of that pastor here in Europe, you will faint. You will go crazy and say, ah, no, mama. No, no, no. Anybody else but not this one. In the diaspora of the 100% of the people, 80% know that pastor. That mother, I buried her. I closed my mouth and said, oh, la, la, this is not possible. The mother has died. The children have scattered. The pastors have played with her. A beautiful woman. What is that? I said, Mama, you are a woman, no matter the sickness that you have. How can you end up sleeping with a man of God? Actually, a man of Satan. You are a mother of children. You have brought up kids. Why do you mothers have such giveaways? Why? Because many of you, among you, many among you, you only identify yourself with sex. That is why when they meet, when you, when you meet a man, you have to laugh and walk in a certain way, do this, dress like that, because you think that you are instruments of play. You yourself, you have lowered yourself to the level of sex. Hmm? But you are a person created in the image of God. Think and reflect. You yourself have placed yourself in that position. Why? Because you do not know your role. You are a priestess of the highest. You are a servant of God. You are not sexual objects. You are not a flower. That's nonsense. You are the flower of God, not a decoration in the house. A woman is a flower. What's that? When we say you are a lotus flower, we mean you are the guardian of the sacred flame. Not flowers in the street. No. A woman is a flower. What sort of nonsense is that? We mean the presence of God on the inside of you. That is what will bring joy and happiness in the house. You know when you place a flower in the house, it brings that beauty. So you are a flower in the sense that the presence of our highest of Tatanzambi in you, that is what brings joy and happiness in the house. But you're not a flower like a flower in the street, no. You are the servant of the eternal. That is where all the teachings that lack modesty they are showing you this is how they this is how it is done this is how it is done i've seen many people on the internet they are holding bananas to show you how to it is very sad what is all this africans how have you entered into all this type of stupidity on the internet you are placing a photo of yourself you're kissing the air mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kissing mm -hmm. empty kiss your mouth is shaped like a kiss you are in your house and you want to kiss the entire world. It's very sad. We now call you microbes and viruses. We are provoking you to wake up your proudness. You are microbes and viruses, especially the women of Africa. The back is exposed on the internet. This needs to stop. Up to sleeping with church leaders in the name of the Lord. Is that normal? You yourself have reduced yourself to this level. You women of today, zero, absolutely zero. That is why you have given birth to thieves, arm robbers, crooks, hackers, corrupt politicians, pawnsters, and bite scientists. You have turned the world upside down. You have put the world in disorder. You have to be eliminated out of the face of the earth because you are no longer valuable. Rise up, our women, our mothers. Rise up. Stop these bad behaviors. Stop these ways. We want to see men and women of the post-creation, each at their post of work. If not, you will be eliminated. The two olives, Papai Kumani and Afoso de Sonama, came to teach the message of the Son of Man, to voice out the eternal gospel, his word, that is the promise of Master Yeshua, that tells us that you women of the post-creation, you need to have grace, and to have it, you need to do some work on yourselves. And to start that journey, wear some uncomfortability, mama. Wear some modesty. Hmm? They will play a song in the church. You're going to drop your offering of the church, in front of the church, and you're dancing and shaking so we can see your elegance. We don't need to be dancing rumba in church. 
It is a place of prayer and meditation. When you enter into the church, shut up. Rather, keep quiet, sit down. At the end of the church, get out. But how does this happen? Let's meet up in the reign of a thousand years. You shall see how it is done. Or look for the eternal gospel. You enter into a holy place, the only thing you can do is keep quiet. And the last thing you should do is keep quiet. Oh, so what should I do from the beginning to the end of the church? I said you should keep quiet. Yes. Beginning to the end of the church service, keep quiet and focus on God. Oh, so only men can speak. Not even the men should keep quiet. If you, the elder of the church, woman, you have to keep quiet, huh? then we men should shut up for eternally. But you, you enter into the church to get an appointment of soul healing. There you expose your husband and sleep with the head of the church. So my dear pastors, delete and remove soul healing. Take our videos of Zolabantu, play it in your meeting places. We love you so much Zolabantu, our mothers. I know this message was harsh, but it is the truth. This act of soul healing, it is satanic and needs to be removed from the church. We love you so much as well. And two kisses, our mothers. Hi guys, welcome to Zola Bantu Education. I'm your tutor for today. My name is Peace Okweyemi Adedeji. I'm from Nigeria and I will be taking you through Society Education Chapter 1, Lecture 4, where we have Education, Unity, Economic Growth and Security. Um, this lecture attempts to find solution to some of the major problems of African society. And this problem are, the, are what we, I just listed, that is um, the education, unity, economy, and security. And every, everybody will agree with me that um, Africa has work to do in all these areas. However, this module we only talk about education um, please take a deep breath as you follow me with patience let's have a look at the contents for today's lecture i would love to introduce the lecture <clears throat> with a quote of marcus gavi he said liberate the minds of men and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men. Hmm. Liberate the minds of men. And ultimately, you will liberate the bodies of men. Hmm. Um, for most of you that do not know um, who Marke Gavi was, Marke, Marcus Mosiah Gavi, he lived between 1877 and 1940. He lived between 1877 and 1940, and he was a charismatic black leader, charismatic black leader who organized the very first important American black nationalist movement between 1919 and 1926. He's also the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA. And this is what caught my attention when I was reading about it. Mm -hmm. 